Hello, everybody, and welcome to the top eight of the Clash Bash. Will, it is Clash O'Clock. Are you ready for some exciting uh, action here with a uh, friend, Darth Prentice Greg, and uh, going up against OK668? Dude, I'm super excited, as always, with Clash, and it's a pleasure to work with you. Uh, it is a pleasure to work <laughs> with you as well. Uh, we've been doing this for a few matches now, having a good time, and we're going to get into the... This is going to be a, a, game one of the match. So the, let's do a little quick rundown of the of the structure here for those who might be tuning in for the first time. Uh, the Clash Bash League uh, is a best two out of three match format where each player is going to bring two decks of their choice into the match. When you win a match, you cannot win another... Or when you win a game in the match, you cannot use that hero again. So if you win a game, you set that hero aside and you play with your new hero. The loser of that game can choose whether or not to switch uh, to another deck or keep their same deck, but the first person to win with both their heroes will eventually win the match and move on uh, here. So... Uh, we're going to see that in the first, uh, in the in this, this, this is the opening to round top eight quarterfinals here. And uh, the deck lists were open for the league. And so uh, in the Swiss rounds, you're, you don't know what your opponents will have. So they choose beforehand, but you don't know until the flip, right? So, but we do know what each player brought to the top eight of the tournament. I myself was a participant in brought uh, Victor and Reinar uh, as my two heroes. Nice. Here. Uh, but we know that Greg will be running Riptide and Kano in this matchup. And OK is going to be running Betsy and Katsu. What do you think of those? I think it's interesting because I feel like both decks from both players operate on different axes. Typically, when you do a tournament like this, you want to bring as many of the same style of deck as possible. So your opponent has to adjust to that game plan at some point, right? If they have a deck that just folds to the specific game plan, it'll fold to both of the heroes. Absolutely. And uh, the the nemesis, I guess, of, of the format uh, usually tends to be these arcane based heroes. If you're not packing right, the arcane barrier, you can run into some trouble. So we know that Greg is running Kano uh, and we'll see how that turns out. So let's get ready and, and start game number one. So here we are. Game number one of this match is going to be Greg on Riptide on the top and OK is going to be on Betsy on the bottom. It looks pretty sick. I'm I'm pretty excited. This matchup is interesting. Riptide, uh, specifically this list, very aggressive. A lot of on hits, um, and with Dreadbore, actually has uh, weird chances to fatigue Betsy, especially this Betsy list because the Betsy list that uh, they're playing is more of like a setup list, right? So it's like take a turn off, play a big, bigger than big, play a big bop, and then the next turn bop them big, right? And Riptide might not give them a chance. Uh, with all the on-hit effects and uh, might be able to stifle some with uh, defense reactions. It's, you know, I want to say it's Riptide favor coming into the game, but we'll just have to see how it, how it plays out, actually. And let's do that right now. And off to the races we go. Uh, OK on Betsy has got the turn zero plays a bigger than big. And it looks like there it is. they'll move to Arsenal and simply pass the setup turn zero. That's actually kind of huge. The red bigger than big turn zero <laughs> feels great. Holy frick. It's so huge. It's so big. It's bigger than big. <laughs> it's bigger than big. Interestingly, Betsy has civic duty, which is interesting. I can't immediately think of a good chess piece for her, but it's a temper three that gives her opponent a vigor token. One vigor token is maybe all Riptide needs to like have a full turn. So it's very interesting to run that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Riptide not allow not gonna let bigger than big just be too big because he's throwing a searing shot laced with inertia can't be blocked with defense reactions from hand. That is correct, and I believe that is oh no no frailty. frailty. Yep. 
Uh, so weapons and arsenal attacks will get the minus ability, but we see the good time chapeau and two blue block threes out uh, block taking eight. block and eight. So uh, Greg just Ooh. arsenals and passes, and now bigger than big bigger than big has popped, and a oh. concuss. Oh, a concuss ready to rock Riptide. Holy frick! This is coming in for eleven. Eleven, and when this hits. A uh, hero, if its attack is greater than the base, they discard a card. And it has overpower with the, uh, or is that a wager? No, I think that's the wager. I don't think they okay. did Betsy, and I think that's because of how much they had to block uh, last turn and the fact that they do have to pitch for this turn. So, bigger than big, pumping this up to 11. The wager for the might token, I'm assuming they're wagering. Spike fake trap. Ooh. What? All oh, traps. Oh my gosh. Buzzsaw trap, spike pick trap, buzzsaw trap. Uh if an attack has greater oh, than base, it knocks it down. And it did. It knocked it all the way down to six and was able to block it out with a spike <laughs> pick trap, which was asking whether or not they used uh reactions. I don't think they had any, but it didn't look like they did okay given the spinal tap treatment to uh, concuss, giving it to eleven and just getting it canceled oh. right out. And Greg responds with a seven power death touch, getting the uh, might oh. token breaking in the process to get it into that break point. Oh what gosh. a response. So on a hit, Darth Prentice gets to choose Inertia Frailty Blood Rot, and it's coming in for the break point of seven because of the might token. He was able to earn off of only blocking with two cards. This doesn't have go again. I could see him snapsing it, though, because he's still got two more cards in hand. Oh, and he's going to have so much more on top of that. He did. He broke the Blossom of Spring uh, to get the resource to play that from Arsenal. Yep. And he is getting blocked out, getting the Vigor and the Quicken from the Civic Armors. Uh, and we'll see if he's got a next reaction. Turn crazy too. So good. Uh, the Civic Duty, I was also running that in in Victor. Uh -huh. There's you, You're just trying to get a fridge at that point, yeah. and you're going to wing the Vigor you know, over anything else, you know, you know but is, is one resource worth three block? I, I think yeah. so, for the most part. Riptide, ip one himself, uh, Arsenal pass. I think it was a fine turn. Got himself a Vigor and a Quicken. Uh, his next five-card hand is looking insane. Betsy starts her turn off with a blue Money Where Your Mouth Is into Anathos. This is just a really strong combo. Um, with Betsy's hero ability, they have to pitch a bunch of cards because they got... Yellows and blues in the yellows and reds in their hand, but uh, eight overpower wagering gold, pretty good. Not bad, not bad. Uh, Riptide known to have a bunch of defense reactions, uh, but still have to put a lot in front of it to avoid the on hit. They're blocking with two pieces of equipment, makes me really excited to see if they're just going to try to pop off with this quick and vigor and five cards to work with next turn. That could be explosive does seem like this is like the i guess the core of oh the tar pit trap is that the no hit or what did i just see uh, no so it popped up because of hornet sting it took the top card uh -huh. of the deck for an arrow put that trap on the bottom um so i don't know if that's what would i what would i do time, without but... you <laughs> <laughs> i would just i'd just be wandering this is oh look at that what we're just making the story up as we go. No, uh, <laughs> dude, when I'm playing Talishar by myself, there's so many triggers that like fly by me. Uh, oh man, it's like I play a non-attack is... action and then just disappears. And it's yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. even remember if I played it. Having two sets of eyes is it was so much easier. Starting the turn off, red bolt and shot. Uh, not breaking getting, the quicken. Getting no, no, got a new vigor and quicken because he blocked with oh, God. the same equipment <laughs> oh, God. again. It's happening so quick. Oh my gosh. Okay, four cards in hand. He's got go again. And so Betsy's still up six uh, points here. Oh, this is insane. Yeah, Betsy uh, holding on really strong, but she's almost out of a She's almost out of armor, right? Yeah, uh, she's just uh, just about there. So, so I mean, the the flip side of that is that drill shot doesn't have that big of an impact necessarily. Yeah. All right. Uh, we do see the drill shot had the go again from the quicken. The lace with inertia loads the arsenal. A light ray lace blood rot comes in. Oh, my and a God. golden shot for a nine go again. But he is empty. 
Uh, but it's still nine threatening and additional oh. blood rot and taking care of a future arsenal in the process. And it doesn't look like okay, it's all out. Yeah. Will just be a draw pass situation there, taking two more uh, at the at the end step. That turn was huge. That turn was massive, and it, he's going to get another one because he's got uh, Betsy can't threaten anything, left no cards in their hand, so they can keep their life total high. Which actually ended up biting them because the real on hits were at the end of the turn that uh, they needed to block. Um, and there's another so riptide just coming right back. Yeah, go again. Gets the go again. Gets the buff. The plus one buff to get the go again. Uh, it will be blocked out clean. There's no reaction. Uh, didn't look like he put anything in the arsenal, but here we see a nimbleism being played from hand. Riptide triggers, gets the card in the arsenal, flips it, and it's another blue Bolton shot coming in for five oh go gosh. again. This might be it for the turn, unless there's something weird in their hand. I don't, I don't see them playing another card, uh, no getting resources. another arrow in their arsenal. So I think they're just setting up for the next big turn. Betsy only got one card in hand going in. Yeah, so the arsenal pass. Betsy only has one card in hand, probably a hammer swing or an arsenal. Uh, Riptide just setting up for another five card hit. That and just an arsenal pass. Oh, and on the end step, Riptide does sigil. We were talking about. Or is life? that his turn? I was. I was. I did. The, yeah. I did the thing where I was like, "Look, these these life totals are indicative of the game state," and immediately was punished for saying such such nonsense. Uh, here's a sleep dart by Greg getting the might token buff. Uh, for six, or is this for, uh, this is dread bore, I believe, getting the yeah. plus one. Um, I think the but interesting part sleep dart is for six here, you as Riptide, you don't have a real weapon, you got to be able to push some damage, you have to win, like you have to force a win, right? It's going to be really hard mm -hmm. to fatigue, even though I brought that up earlier. They're pitching away two red cards to play out the six attack. Uh, the on hit doesn't matter as much. Betsy might actually get a turn off of this. She yeah. does keep two cards and has a card in Arsenal. She's got a gold token. Riptide draws back up. Oh, Goliath. Goes to five. Goliath Gauntlet breaking, getting the plus two. Ooh. It's it's bet big. It's a Betsy specialization. Bet big. Oh, from Arsenal. Oh, that's so good. And with the when two floating, attacks, because they pitch two blues, they can 11 Betsy. overpower. Looks like they're wagering. You can wager a gold, might, and vigor token with them. Sheesh. Swinging right back in her favor. Just haymakers. This is Rocky Four. This is a bunch of punches and no one understanding how to block. So I think if I'm Riptide in this situation, I want to block out as much but as there's possible a block. this. Oh, they didn't. Okay. So they, they did, did a block collapsing the... trap. Yes, collapsing trap. Yep. So I think typically as the aggro deck, you want to um, try to block out whenever the more fatigue deck uh, swings an attack. You want to block it out because they're they're going to become in a position eventually where they don't have the tempo naturally because of their deck. It could be an all blue hand. It could be they set up an aura. Then you get your tempo back. Then you get to play the aggro game again. Um, but he's like, nah, I'm having my turns right now. <laughs> so he blocks with just a defense reaction and he's already dread boring. And that dread bore brings a bolt and shot, getting the plus one to five, giving it the go again. It gets blocked out clean, so there'll be no uh, reload here, but we will see a scout, the periphery, periphery, and uh, that brings an Ooh. intoxicating shot. We see the Riptide Specialization Arrow. Coming in for seven. Coming in for seven on hit. Their opponent gets a bunch of stuff, and that's kind of interesting. Uh mm -hmm. Yeah, normally you'd be like, well, uh, I would love to have a bunch of stuff, uh, but then it just turns Riptide stuff on the entire Ooh, time. But it but also turns on Betsy stuff. It does. It does. A thump coming in for eight with Go Again and Dominate is is on now hit. staring Riptide. Discard a card. Yep, because on hit, discard because oh of my the buff. <laughs> but we do see the that's frailty crazy. trap. Is there any more? Oh, that's could, interesting. Could load so, the arsenal. Betsy took a bunch of damage just to get all that stuff from the infecting shot. This trap dealt one damage when she was already at three. It's kind of gross. And here's an infecting shot as you uh, as we speak. And there's coming in for five, threatening an additional two. This is a like a must block situation. Every hit is basically lethal at this point. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Betsy blocking for five. That's fine. But Keeping I think it's two? just, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's really dire right now being a two life against Riptide. Mm-hmm. If he can get two more traps yep. to trigger, two game traps. Ends. Yep. Yep. Game over indeed. Uh, we do see oh, the boy. pitch. The blue has one floating one now. Ooh, pitching a red. Nothing else floating. Uh, Anathos coming in for six. This will require two cards. Uh, if yep. the, unless they have a four block defense reaction. Betsy cashed in gold to probably find a better arsenal card and was able to pump Anathos by doing so. Uh, throwing six when Riptide's at three. This game... Life totals are really close. I think Reptide is Riptide <laughs> is fully in the driver's seat with his uh, defense reactions, given that he has the right ones. Oh, there's Ooh. two. Oh, is it is it time? Is it already? One, is one of them's doing at least one damage. One of them's dealing at least one damage. It's a uh, tar pit trap and uh, inertia trap. Inertia, inertia trap, trap definitely pinged. And he comes back with another death touch. The second death touch is coming through. Ow, will require the frick. at least two cards. Unless, of course, there's so good. A, a couple of those money where your mouth is, two blocks. That would be depressing. All the bops. Yeah. Oh, well, she's got the she's got two, three blocks got right the there. Coon, two cards. Here we go. The end game grind. I'll take your two cards. Eat my two cards. Take your two cards. Ooh, and it's only gonna come in for four. It's still a break point, but he's at three, so he can get away with blocking uh with one card here. I think this is how Betsy tries to win, right? Because if she pumps that Anathos, if she gives a go again, if she, you know, does anything weird to it, Riptide mm-hmm. will have a trap mm-hmm. that'll be able to trigger off of it. So at this point, you're just wanting to put in a vanilla four damage weapon swing and hope that carries you across the finish line. Uh, yep, that is a great point. We don't want to trigger any more traps. Yeah, I've already forgotten and, if they did another inertia trap or not, but if they found one, I would be slamming that thing in Arsenal right now with both players at six. Falcon Wind coming in. Oh, we see the two block. And that's the game. Oh, my oh. gosh. Oh, just not enough in hand. Oh, a sink below and no in dread bore. Dread boring taking out the sink Yo, blows. Oh, <laughs> sink, <laughs> sink blows in hand. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. An impactful end to the game with the Falcon Wing coming in, getting the Dread Boar buff, uh, eliminating any possible defense reaction from OK. Greg taking game one of this best of three match uh, here at the Clash Bash quarterfinals. So nice. I feel like I feel like looking back on the game, Betsy definitely had a window to probably win. Uh, if she uh, was able to get off, you know, a series of these large on hits over and over again. Um, but I feel like that matchup is just really hard for her. That is, that is, I think like guardian, I think has, has a little potential to dodge that the riptide effect, but at the end of the day, it just, uh, she was not doing it and yep. he was, he was just doing, doing what he wanted. Yeah.